I don't know anyone who is poor. I'm not talking about uh, the guy in the corner with a, a sign, will work for food, um, but a personal relationship with someone who is poor. One parishioner has put several disadvantaged youths through college. There's a commitment. Another parishioner volunteers with the refugee settlement at Catholic Charities. She mentors two Iraqi teens and their single mother. She works for $8 an hour at the Orlando airport and took home $800 last month. Their rent is $900. That's poor. And they do not know what they're going to do. A poor person is one car transmission away from not making the rent. They'd have to choose between medicine and food. They have no safety net. So I do not know anyone like that, a personal relationship, let alone a commitment to someone who is poor. Now, good things happen when we connect with the poor. And, two, and ten years ago, while attending her son's soccer practice, Chrissy Todd was approached by a couple who were homeless and pregnant, right here in Oviedo. And while talking to the couple, Chrissy learned their story. The father had been laid off from his job in the construction industry. The mom lost her job after a long stay in the hospital due to gestational diabetes. Subsequently, lost her home, ended up living in a car, which is then repossessed. And as a result, they lost all their personal possessions and were left living on the streets. Well, by using their contact and resources, the Todd family, along with the community, were able to rebuild this couple's lives. And they placed them in a temporary living facility, provided them with cl clothing, food, and other necessities. They received help in reattaining the personal documents, getting job interviews, eventually getting a job. And in the end, they were successful in getting this couple back on their feet. In assisting this family, Chrissy Todd and others discovered that services are available but limited and difficult to gain access to, especially for families. So it was at this time that the vision became clear and an organization was started um, called HOPE. HOPE is right here in Oviedo and has helped um, countless families be self-sufficient and stay off the streets. They have a thrift store on the corner of Mitchell Hammock and Alafea, and nearby is their food bank and a um, place where they, people come and, and get help um, and, and direction and jobs and medical referrals and whatever they need to have dignity and reduce homelessness. So good things happen when, for those in need of help when we connect with them. Our parish, we give $10,000 a year annually to HOPE, um, for operations, and another $10,000 for its uh, new, newly refurbished building. This is not much compared to our $1.3 million operational budget, but it's something. Good things happen. Christians, though, are not only, though, for social work and making a difference. The church is more than a community action organization with hymns. We're heralds of the kingdom. We proclaim our King, Jesus Christ. And look at him. He relied on the generosity of friends. He had no money, no retirement, no land, no place to lay his head. When he died on the cross, he was stripped naked. He did not even have clothes, he did not have dignity. He was buried in someone else's tomb. Jesus was poor, and he is our king, and he began the reign of God. This is what we proclaim. So this gospel raises some questions, a story Jesus told about the sheep and the goats, where Jesus said, whatever you did for these least of brothers of mine, you did for me. Well, what would you do for your sisters and brothers in their need? Well, some families, some of you have taken in family members from Puerto Rico. 
Some here have helped addicted relatives in their struggles. Some here are nurses and social workers, and you daily help the poor. Some make real sacrifices of time, talent, and treasure for your brothers and sisters. Maybe not by blood, but you've made that decision. Now, this parish does do, many of you do many things on your own for the poor, but whenever we do initiatives as a parish, it gets a little bit of interest, but no follow-up, and it's kind of disappointing. I know people are busy, but I'm just praying. There's more going on than I know, because that's the question. How do we treat our brothers and sisters in their need? How do we treat the Lord? Now, parish, we do tithe. One uh, percent of our Sunday collection we set aside to help people in need, and we give out about ten or fifteen thousand a year for rent, utilities, gas, um, giving people a, a bridge to somewhere. Um, we do have funds for people from Puerto Rico, evacuees from Puerto Rico, and their connections with Catholic charities. So just call the parish office; um, we can help them get settled here. We have the angel trees, uh, um, or advent trees at the doors, not Christmas trees, advent trees. And um, you, go, you, you many take these little angels and get a gift for someone in their need. And that's, that's wonderful. Um, some of you ask if you can give the gift personally, and well, that could be humiliating to people, so we don't do it that way. But thank you for your generosity. But giving gifts or money, um, is not the end of our charity or treating one another as brother and sister. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of how we can be brother and sister to know others personally in their struggles and to walk with them. As the Catechism explains, to receive in truth the body and blood of Christ given up for us, we must recognize in the poorest his brethren. It's important not to limit the, the last judgment scene to a, a, some sort of personal morality alone, though it's that. The church teaches that you and I, as the body of Christ, have a responsibility to our society. It's simply not asking if I feed the hungry, I give drink to the thirsty, but does our culture do that? Does our politic do this? And so we ask questions. How does this tax reform care for the poor? How does our nation welcome the stranger through just immigration policies that reunite families and protect immigrants with the law? Do the poor have adequate access to decent, decent health care? I was in prison and he visited me. How does our prison system promote reform and rehabilitation? The questions that we can ask our culture, that we can ask our society, and not stop asking until other people are asking these questions. We don't have to have the answers. You know, our bishops and the church has some wonderful policies and all that people of goodwill to consider we don't have to have the answers ourselves, but we must ask these questions until others are asking them. Until others are asking them and together finding the answers. Because Jesus will ask questions for us at our judgment. He'll say, I was hungry and what did you do? Express righteous anger? <laughs> I was hungry and you were too busy? I was hungry and you prayed? Pope Francis said, yes, pray for the hungry, then feed them. That's how prayer works. <laughs> it has a point. <laughs> so I do have a prayer for me. My daily prayer has been to ask the Lord that I may be a brother to someone who is poor and make it personal. And it is my prayer for the parish as well. May our parish be brother and sister 
to those in our community who are hungry and thirsty, in prison or sick, despairing, addicted, inconvenient, pain in the ass, a lot of trouble, but above all, in need of God's love. Good things happen, holy things happen for our brothers and sisters in need and for us. I don't know how the answer. I don't know what will happen, but I'm trusting the Lord to show the way.